Hi, everyone. This is Dr. Tracy McCarthy. Thank you for joining us for this discussion on the hidden, obscured name history of the Taino. In the Americas, we have a group of people, large group of people, identified as indigenous, but they carry a name that is not only apparently a colonizer name, but it is a name that suggests sort of a secret European nobility status versus an American Aborigine status. And yes, it is the Taino. And so there are questions about uh, the identity of the individuals. Are we talking about an indigenous identity or are we talking about a colonizer identity that has been superimposed onto uh, indigenous people? And in the worst case scenario, are we talking about a complete uh, displacement of the indigenous people that would comport with the narrative of the extinction of the indigenous people in parts of the Americas? And so let's just look at this and see what the concerns are. And so as a starting point, we're just going to quickly look at this narrative about the origin of the Taino people. And so the dictionary understanding is, is that they are a member of the Arawak people, formerly inhabiting the Greater Antilles and the Bahamas. It's also understood that this name is associated with the language Taino. Now, if you recall previously, we talked about the Akan in Africa and how there is a connection in terms of this name Taino uh, with respect to language between the people on the west coast of Africa and then all of these people groups uh, throughout the Americas, primarily uh, on the islands. What's also noteworthy is that you have this Taino identity that seems to run through the islands. However, you don't have an actual indigenous group of people on what would be considered the mainland uh, America. Uh, with this name. And so that's definitely noteworthy. If there's a question about why wouldn't there be a Taino group uh, situated perhaps in the Southeast Woodlands area. Now, if someone is aware of a group that has been obscured, uh, please share that information. And so you have this collective of people spread out throughout the Americas uh, going by this name Taino. Now, as with names that are identifying people on the mainland of America, there is generally a narrative that the name is some sort of variation of something uh, that belongs to the original language of the original people. However, what you see with Taino, and you see this across a number of dynamics, is that this word Taino, and it's capitalized by the way, so this name Taino translates as Lord, Noble, and Foremost. And so essentially this name indicates an identity known as nobility. And we've talked about nobility before and what nobility is all about. However, when you look here, you also see that the Taino are identified as a pre-Columbian indigenous group of people in the Bahamas and the greater Antilles. Now, if you think back about who colonized these areas, you'll recall a name, and the name is Christopher Columbus. He goes by a no number of names, but we'll just stick with Christopher Columbus for now. And so this name is important in terms of the colonization dynamic because you not only have Christopher Columbus representing uh, Iberia, that Iberian area, you also have Christopher Columbus, according to his own history, uh, as someone of Italian ancestry. And we're going to look at why that is so important. Not only does this name Taino indicate this nobility status, you also have this name Taino associated with Italy. 
And if you recall, the colonization dynamic was coming out of Italy. This was a Roman dynamic for the most part. There was actually a confederacy going on here. But in terms of the overarching theme, you have Rome serving as the foundation of this colonizer dynamic. And then you, of course, have Christopher Columbus being the person sort of spearheading much of this dynamic. And so you have this individual coming out of Italy. Uh, this person encounters groups of people. Uh, these people subsequently become identified as Taino. And then you even see that this name Taino is associated with Lombardy in Italy. So not only do we see this unusual connection between the Taino in the Americas, the Taino language that happens to be on the west coast of Africa, and then this Taino land space that happens to be in Italy. We have this definition or this transliteration of Taino that means secretly. And so this is consistent with the construct of nobility. If you recall, when we looked at nobility, it was about having this sort of secret or hidden knowledge or having an identity that was somewhat obscured. And so here you have this name Taino indicating secretly coming out of the Bulgarian language into the English. And so you see this Bulgarian root again when it translates into the Latin. Taino translates as a cult. And a cult is another word for something that is hidden, something that is obscured. And again, this is consistent with the identity of European nobility. And you even see this transliteration of secretly uh, coming from the Bulgarian into the Yoruba and the Igbo. Even tracing this name Taino from the Bulgarian into the Portuguese, you see the same dynamic. You see this transliteration meaning secret. You continue to find these transliterations of secret, hidden, occult, nobility in both the Spanish and the Galician. And so again, still translating out of the Bulgarian. Now, as we wrap this up, a number of questions come up, and these questions are similar to the questions that have been raised about people who have been identified as indigenous or Native American. And that is, who exactly are the people identified as Taino? You have this etymology dynamic, you have these transliterations that indicate that the people have an identity that may go above and beyond what is understood as indigenous identity. You have this connection apparently to Bulgaria, you have this connection to Italy, and in some instances you have a connection to the west coast of Africa. But what also stands out is that the people who are identified as the Arawak as the Taino have been identified as extinct in a way that is similar to the American Indians. You have this extinction narrative. But you also have people that are continuing on with this identity. Now with the colonizer dynamic uh, and those individuals being understood as nobility, it is noteworthy that the name of the Taino, the people that we see now, uh, that that name is translating to nobility, translating to Lord, also translating to occult, hidden, secret. And I think sometimes people forget that the colonizers didn't disappear. And so they are still in the locations that they colonized. And so what happened to those individuals? And so you had these individuals coming out of Rome coming out of Spain, coming out of France, coming out of Portugal, coming out of Scotland, Ireland, England, um, and situating themselves in these various places throughout the Americas, and they have gone nowhere. And so when you see individuals who have these identities that sort of harken back to Europe, uh, you do have to ask the question about the authenticity 
of these identities. Now, it is also possible that there is mixing going on, and so therefore people are legitimately uh, holding on to the Aboriginal or the Indigenous status identity. But you also have a possibility when you're talking about the type of colonizing that went on, you also have this possibility that the people have essentially been supplanted, that the people may be extinct, and that the people who are identifying uh, by these indigenous group names, and we're talking about all throughout the Americas, all of it. We're also talking about Africa, we're talking about Asia, we're even talking about Europe. Uh, when you have these uh, people groups that have been supplanted, it's possible that what you're looking at in many instances uh, is a representation of the colonizer that has taken on the identity of the indigenous people. And so not only have they possibly gone native, uh, they may have simply appropriated the name and the culture of the people that they supplanted. Uh, that name, uh, meaning Lord, nobility, secret, occult, hidden, um, it's pretty loaded. And so it definitely begs for uh, further examination, not just by researchers on the outside looking in, but by the people themselves. And so all of these groups of people that we are talking about, it is incumbent upon them to do their own research about their own ancestries, uh, looking at what is true and what is false. One of the problems, of course, is that at this point, the histories are being provided by the colonizers. Now, people may argue that that's not the case and they have these family histories, um, but by and large, people are getting information from places like Ancestry. They are getting it from census records. They're getting it from church records. And so basically they are getting their histories from the individuals who essentially stole their histories. There's a tendency to think about history in terms of distant past, decades ago, hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago. However, history is being made every day. And so when you look at current history, what you also see is this pattern of replacement demography going on in some places. And so you can see firsthand and in real time how this can take place even without what would be considered conflict or a standard colonization dynamic. And so you can see where groups of people were located in a particular place and then people move into that space, displace the original people, and then actually take on the identity of the people that were originally there. And when you think about this, you can more readily see how this could take place hundreds of years ago when you have individuals, countries, uh, large conglomerates, uh, actually orchestrating this entire dynamic. Nothing has really changed because this dynamic is still being orchestrated. But what you can see here is how people lose their identity. Uh, as they move around, they migrate around, they lose their identity and they take on somebody else's identity. And after a while, there is significant confusion about who people are and where they came from. And so this whole dynamic of having a name like Taino and it being associated with Italy, Iberia, and being associated with nobility, uh, this all makes sense when you look at it in this overall sort of global context of these moving around and colonization dynamics. Now I want to completely wrap this up with a few questions. Um, one question is, what are people doing with this information, with this research, with these analyses? Uh, is this helpful in some practical way? How is this helping to improve your life or someone else's life? It's very important to think about this because it's important that the information serve some sort of purpose. And so if you are Taino, 
this definitely should spark something in you in terms of researching in order to have a better understanding of who you are. Um, and if you are in America, uh, it should spark something for you if you're in Africa, if you're in Asia. Uh, but in addition to sparking thinking, what else is going on? Are you able to do something concrete and useful with the information in service of improving your life, improving your community, improving the lives of others? Remember, knowledge is power. Take care. See you soon.